All right. As you're joining, I just want to say we're we're giving you all a few minutes to come in. It is seven o'clock on the dot, but I'm watching the attendee list crawl up. So we're just going to give it a few minutes before we start so that we know everybody's here who's going to be here. Uh, just an update. I'm just going to give one more minute to make sure everybody gets in before before we get started here. All right, I see the number of joining is, is starting to slow down. So in interest of time, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. As you know, we're here to share information and answer your questions about engagement and mental health at RIT. Uh, we know some of our students are struggling more than ever right now. And we as staff really want you as parents to know what's happening on campus and know what the resources are so that you can really best support your students and, and help us support your students. So we're going to start with an introduction and then our panelists do have a, a brief presentation that they will be giving to you uh, and we'll follow it up with some Q&A. Uh, so you will be able to ask your questions by the Q&A feature that's on the bottom. It should be towards the bottom of your screen. And my co-host and I will be watching your questions throughout the entire presentation. So if you have a question, you can feel free to throw it in there whenever you have it. You don't have to wait until the end. And we will either, you know, hold off because we know it's going to be answered or we'll save your question so we can ask it out loud to the panelists or you might get a, a, a response directly in the chat just depending on what your question is. Uh, but don't be afraid to ask your questions as they come up and, and we'll respond to you as we are able. So I'll kick off the introductions myself. Uh, I'm Chelsea Petrie. I'm the Director of Parent and Family Programs here at RIT. Hopefully you all recognize my name from all those emails you get from me once a month. And as you can imagine, my job is really to support you as parents and, and make sure that you know what's happening here so you can support your student. Uh, I'm going to ask my co-host, Samantha Jeffries, now to introduce her, herself so you know who's answering your questions behind the scenes. Hi everyone, my name is Samantha Jeffries. Um, as Chelsea shared, I am one of the case managers here on campus and the co-host for tonight's session and I will be answering questions behind the scenes. Um, my role on campus is really to assist students with connecting with resources and, and assisting with that. So I'm looking forward to whatever questions you guys have and, and helping out. Thanks, Sam. And I'm now going to pass it over to our panelists who will introduce themselves and then get started into the presentation. 
Good evening, everyone. My name is Dave Bagley. I, I serve as an assistant vice president for Campus Life. We appreciate you taking the time uh, to, to be with us tonight on this spring-like uh, spring -like evening. So uh, we look forward to sharing some information and, and being good partners. So welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Harold Fields, and I serve as the director of the Center for Residence Life here at RIT. Uh, thanks for joining us, and we look forward to answering your questions. I'm Erin Pomerantz Castillo. I'm the associate director of clinical services here at CAPS, which is our counseling and psychological services uh, office. It is a glorious day to be on campus. I have to tell you, I passed many students walking out on the trails and I can actually see a bunch of hammocks set up in the woods uh, from my window. So it, it almost feels normal and it is, it, it's a wonderful sight to see. So I'm really excited to share um, with you guys tonight and answer your questions. Good evening, everyone. My name is Erin Halligan Avery. I have the distinct privilege of overseeing some of our wellness areas here on campus. The wellness education area, which provides a standalone graduation requirement, two classes being required for RIT students to take prior to graduation. Our outdoor education area, which runs and oversees the historic Red Barn Climbing Facility our health promotion area, and our Center for Recreational Sports and Intramurals. I am actually going to kick off the presentation tonight. And again, on behalf of my panelists, my colleagues, and I, we're really happy to have you with us. So our first question actually is one that we're going to pass on to you. Um, have you heard any of these questions before, or have you heard any of these statements from your student? Things like, there's nothing to do here on campus. Everything stopped when COVID came to campus. Um, it's really hard to meet people around here. No, I promise nothing's going on. Um, and my personal favorite, no, mom, I don't want you to ask someone what's happening and what I can get involved with on campus. If you are hearing these things, I would say you are not alone. Um, and some of the questions that had come in previously led us to believe that there may be a difference between what students may be thinking is happening or available on campus and what might actually be available and happening on campus. That is why we're here today. Um, first, I'd like to start by saying that if you're hearing some of those things from your student, it may be the case that some of these other things are going on. Things like them feeling anxious or uncertain about what to expect if they are to attend an on-campus event. They may, may feel embarrassed uh, here on campus, not really being sure, are they the only person that feels like they're being left out? Are other people engaging? They may assume that they're the only person who experiences loneliness. Um, I know that previously uh, I would say if I had a dollar for every student that I heard who thought that they were the only student who didn't have a connection on campus, I'd have a lot of dollars. Um, and I say that because it's really not a unique experience for students to feel that way, but the reality is that many students are looking for their niche, looking for a group, looking for a club or an organization or an event that they can participate in that will help them feel more connected on campus. Your student may feel uncomfortable interacting with other people, whether that be because of fears related to COVID or just some uncertainty about being a new student potentially to campus. And last but not least, they may genuinely not know yet where they're supposed to be looking to find some of these options on campus. Dave is going to cover some of those options with you here in a moment. Right on cue. Uh, thank you, thank you, Aaron. Uh, and, and I think this one slide uh, really speaks to where, where where can students find out what is going on. Um, we try very hard as you know, a technical institute, if you will, um, to rally use social media and different type of tech platforms, uh, and are, and are using these uh, and updating these sometimes. Um, by the minute, um, whether it's a our college activities board uh, on a Twitter feed or really partnering with the RIT Student Life 
these are updated almost constantly in, in, in many ways. And it really is a plethora of information uh, of what's happening around campus. And as we head to the back end of the semester, uh, and as I mentioned earlier in regards to the spring weather, uh, and, and as uh, Aaron mentioned, is campus today is was, was incredible. I'm home now, but um, just to the, the feel, the quarter mile, seeing students out there just really enjoying what Western New York can offer this time of year. And folks, it's not always this warm, this late in March, so we're gonna take advantage every second we get. So, um, but again, the, uh, we have a, there we go. All right, so in my area specifically, uh, I, as I mentioned earlier, I, I provide leadership to uh, the Center for Campus Life, uh, and we have uh, under our umbrella is clubs and organizations, um, some student engagement opportunities and, and some resources uh, and some programs and events. Uh, I'm just going to hit on a few, and I will also caution, I've, I've done this presentation before uh, in an admissions opportunity, uh, and they give us about a half an hour just to talk about this. So I'm going to try not to talk too fast which sometimes I do, but I also wanna make sure that you're aware of some of the, uh, the program services that fall under our world. I mentioned before clubs and organizations, uh, we have well over 300 clubs and organizations on campus, um, uh, whether it's from fraternity and sorority life, a very healthy Greek system. Um, we have an entire team of five full-time professionals that helps support the financial components and the internal controls that come with managing clubs. Uh, we have a whole team that helps with event management uh, and, and marketing and communications. So again, there is, there's a whole bunch that's in there. Um, we try really hard, especially at the beginning of the semester uh, with our engagement team to make sure that we're getting out and about. Um, this year, everything in regards to the early, uh, you're gonna see one of my last things, there's orientation uh, in, in the past. So pre-pandemic, pre uh, we would open up our field house and we'd have a huge club fair. Um, we did that all virtual this year uh, and we had some success. Uh, we took some feedback and we, we, and we did it again for, for January and we had even more success. So feeling really good about that. Um, student engagement, as we mentioned before, uh, over our in campus life, we have our Q Center, um, we have Women and Gender Center, um, we have Spirituality Religious Life that supports almost 14 different faiths uh, and, and, and religions. Um, I also in my role get to co-advise uh, student government uh, a very active uh, uh, organization on our campus um, that's advocacy based. Um, so uh, when, there, uh, when there's a challenge, uh, there's a student concern, um, they have platforms and they have opportunity to interact with senior officials uh, almost at any point. Uh, and, and, and it's a really nice model that really gives an opportunity for the student voice to be heard. Um, we have a student run uh, radio station in fact, one of their one of their premier programs is going to be tomorrow. Uh, Dr. Munson has about every about once a month, maybe once every six weeks, he does an Ask Munson uh, for about an hour. So that's actually tomorrow afternoon during one of our recharge days. So a great opportunity for the community to ask Dr. Munson, our president, if there's any questions. Uh, and also in our engagement area, uh, we support we have a lot of students that live off campus or in some of the surrounding uh, some of the surrounding complexes, and, and we have a whole team that supports uh, our off campus and commuter, commuters. Um, and then some just bigger things, our, our college activities board, another another uh, huge organization on our campus. Um, they, they 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 plan our fall fest, our freeze fest. They're already rolling up their sleeves and getting ready for uh, a, a great spring fest, which will be April 21st through the, the 25th. Um, but we are gonna bring out our outdoor stage. We're gonna have some outdoor movies. There's gonna be a lot of giveaways and a lot of opportunity food trucks. Big thing these days, folks, um, a lot of food. Um, the cab also, puts on senior programs uh, and, and another topic we will be uh, we will be starting to plan very soon. Uh, Tiger Den, uh, which supports uh, our, our athletic programs. Um, again, right now we, uh, we have spring sports, but there's no fans, but uh, uh, it's another area under us and we do a lot of support and we anticipate all that will open up uh, uh, come, come fall. Um, if you've ever seen our mascot, uh, Richie, uh, we, uh, Richie is actually managed under our umbrella. Uh, we have a lot of fun um, and, and really try to use Richie at key points. Um, again, just a very friendly figure and really speaks to the spirit of RIT. 
Um, and again, in our area, we also have the campus center and the, and the student alumni union. Um, a lot of opportunities for the students to engage, build community, get something to eat, Ben and Jerry's, uh, get a coffee, uh, or really just, again, a great way for us to build some community. Um, tech crew, uh, tech crew, it falls under, uh, falls under campus life as well. And a great opportunity for students not only to get involved, they have a huge student team, but to really make sure sound and lighting can be, uh, you know, again, state of the art. And the last uh, uh, new student orientation, I mentioned that before, uh, fall, falls under our area. And, and uh, really with all, just about every one of these partners and a whole bunch of others, uh, we really, uh, we take a lot of pride in, in welcoming uh, our, our students and their families uh, to ensure that we are kicking off the year right and really making sure that uh, come those first day of classes, the students are ready to go. Uh, last thing I'll share is I, I also I serve in this role, but I also am a, uh, like many of you, I'm, I'm an RIT parent. I have a first year student uh, that is uh, currently enrolled, and, and and I can feel and and understand some of the questions that might be out there. So I, I can wear both hats uh, sometimes, not always, but uh, tonight I think I have that opportunity. So I think I'm going to hand it hand it right back to to Aaron uh, Halligan Avery. So thank Thanks, you, Steve. Sounds like a lot of diverse offerings and opportunities for students to get involved, uh, regardless of what they might be interested in. On to some of our wellness engagement opportunities. We do have a fitness center that we have taken great pride in making sure that we have appropriate physical distancing and safety measures in place so that students here on campus can continue to use the fitness facilities um, during the time that uh, campus is open. Our fitness center, I believe, is open right now from six o'clock in the morning until nine o'clock at night. And we are currently located in the Gordon Field House, which is one third of a 60,000 square foot building that is taken up by our fitness center equipment. So be sure to have students check that out if they're interested. We also have uh, a lap pool and our whole aquatic center, which is open at various times during the day for lap swim right now. Uh, we just received approval from the COVID higher ups and those at RIT to allow us to start offering some additional rec related opportunities. Certainly these will certainly also adhere to COVID guidelines, but things like playing cornhole or allowing students to walk on the indoor track or um, allowing students to play uh, basketball uh, with each other as long as they bring their own equipment. And if there's just sort of a one-on-one -on -one game going on, those will be some additional options that are available to them. Our red barn climbing is also included in increasing the number of rec opportunities we can make available for students. So there will be a max capacity at this time of 14 students that will be allowed on an hourly basis in the red barn to participate, participate in some indoor rock climbing. Great care has also been paid to making sure that we have appropriate filtration, that the doors of the barn are open when students are in there, masks are being worn at all times, and hand sanitizer is being used in between each climb. We take great pride in the wellness area of not just offering physical related opportunities for students. To us, wellness is more of a comprehensive view that really tries to encompass a lot of what wellness, a lot of what students think and feel uh, could be wellness related. And one example of that is our uh, stock market challenge that you see over there on the right hand side. This is a new program offering that is going to be uh, an intramural offering where students who are interested in investing and in stock market, the stock market will play sort of a game with each other to figure out who can come out on top of that investment strategy. We have plans to make that what we call an extra mural, which will mean that our RIT groups will potentially be competing against Cornell's group or other groups that have stock market challenges at their institutions as well. We have 52 club sports that are under our wellness umbrella, 28 of which are currently active and meeting in person, again, in a safe capacity. 
some of the examples of the types of offerings for club sports that include things like archery, their gymnastics club, volleyball, handball. We even have a Quidditch club that students can participate in. So there are quite a few different clubs and um, intramural opportunities. I would say the difference there is that intramurals are for students that may feel like, oh, I kind of want to try this out. I've never played broom ball before. I'd like to see if maybe I can meet some other students who might share a similar interest. Whereas our club sports are for students who are not at the athletic level or intercollegiate level, but are definitely thinking maybe they come in with some degree of past ability or that they uh, want to engage in more of a club slash tra travel type um, situation. We have our triathlon intramural tournament coming up soon, as well as our virtual running and walking club, which is currently active. 226 members are currently a part of that group. Some additional opportunities available are our Tigers Connect program. This is a new program that we started in the fall semester and it is very, very well attended and students are really uh, engaged and enjoying it. Tigers Connect is an opportunity for students to connect socially and for students to try and build some of their communication skills by engaging with each other in face-to-face -face interactions. We also have a Know Your Stress program, which is a workshop that helps students identify what stress is and also personally what stress management techniques will work for them. Mindful Moments is just a quick program that's designed to introduce students to mindfulness exercises that can help them relieve stress and stay more present um, and to learn the art of mindfulness. Piggybacking on that, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about our wellness education classes. Um, right now during COVID, I believe we still have over 90 course offerings for students in uh, myriad areas of wellness. They can participate in um, our yoga offerings, there's mindfulness offerings, there's stress management classes, financial literacy classes, rock climbing classes. Um, when COVID is not present, we also offer some of the higher intensity hit and power yoga classes, um, and also a wilderness um, survival first aid training uh, weekend trip, which is really nice. Um, so certainly encourage your student to be looking out for those opportunities that are available. We also had our first ever poppy hour, uh, I think it was last month that we had it, where some of the wellness staff showed up with their pets. Uh, I have two cats, Gilbert and Sullivan. They both made an appearance at Poppy Hour. And um, my supervisor, Dr. Wendy Gelbard, showed up with her beautiful golden retriever, Stella. And it was a really nice opportunity for students and staff to come together, talk about a whole host of questions about, you know, how are you doing during COVID? Do you miss your pets at home? How are you engaging with other people while you're here? Um, tell us a fun fact about your pets. Um, and it was a virtual offering that students really enjoyed. We had over 50 students attend that program the first time we offered it. The next one will be coming up in April. And finally, um, you might have already heard from your student about recharge days that are happening. Three will have happened at the closure of this semester. We are on our second recharge day, which is happening tomorrow. There are going to be a total of 34 program offerings, and they include various activities, included guided hikes uh, through Menden Ponds, where bus transportation will be provided. We have 20 in-person activities that are being offered and 10 virtual offerings. So tomorrow is a day full of fun and engagement and opportunity for all of our students. As Dave spoke about earlier, yes, there will be food trucks on campus. We have a whole bunch of offerings, including sampling some of our wellness classes. There's a still life painting opportunity that is um, increasing in uh, levels of participation. We have some esports free play offerings, including our Rocket League and Minecraft groups, yoga, field trips, just a whole bunch of stuff that are available for your students to participate in tomorrow. 
they can go over to campus groups to either pre-register or see what types of events are going to be available. And our very next recharge day, the last one of the semester is going to be on Thursday, April 22nd. So we look forward to engaging students in those opportunities. All right, thanks, Aaron. I can, my name is Harold Fields and I serve as the director of the Center for Residence Life. Um, and I'll start by telling you a little bit about our residential communities. So we house almost 6,000 students when RIT um, is at full occupancy and about half those students live in our residence halls and the other half live in our apartments and the RIT in. Uh, our students who live in the residence halls are primarily first year students, but we do have some upperclassmen who live there particularly as a part of some of our special communities, our special interest houses, and some of our Greek housing. And we'll talk a little bit about those uh, communities shortly. Um, the residential communities are supported by about 24 full-time professionals. Uh, nine of them serve as residence coordinators. Some of you might be familiar with a resident director. That's what that person does. They supervise a staff of undergraduate RAs who live on the floors with your students and help manage the communities. So not only do they help students uh, navigate living on campus, but they also engage your students and help them build connections with their roommates and other students. Um, and they make sure the students abide by policies, everybody's favorite thing. Um, there are about 133 students who serve in RA capacities for us. Um, that includes 111 in our residence halls and about another uh, dozen and a half uh, in our uh, apartment communities and our Greek freestanding houses, as well as the RATN. Um, so for those of you who are parents of sophomores, juniors, or seniors who live on campus, yes, your, res your students do have RAs. Um, no, they don't always like to talk to them. Uh, they chose to live in an apartment for a little bit more autonomy. Um, and as such, uh, the RAs in those communities have many more students that they're responsible for because they do a lot of their work with those residents via email, even when we're not in, in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, every year we do some assessment of how our residents are connected to our, our staff. Uh, so that we can inform our training and our RA selection. Uh, this number on the screen right now is actually from last year's survey. Um, and at that point, about 88% of residents felt confident that they would get support from a member of residence life if they had a question or concern. Um, that includes our apartment communities. And as I mentioned, uh, for some of our students who live in our apartments, that might be juniors or seniors, um, they don't have too many questions uh, because they've been here for a while and they know how to navigate campus. And so we felt really good about that number because it's actually a lot higher for our res halls. Uh, so now, how those folks engage your students. So if your students live on campus, uh, there are uh, three ways primarily that Residence Life staff would be engaging them outside of some of the unfun things like policy uh, enforcement. Um, so guided connections is first. Um, our guided connections are um, scaffolded conversations that happen over the course of the year. And by scaffolded, I mean that they're planned out to coincide with different events during the course of the semester. Um, so when the semester first starts and students first move in, after that first floor meeting, RAs connect with each student in the residence halls to talk about the roommate agreement with their roommate. Uh, so that first conversation is an in-person, uh, one-on-two conversation about the roommate agreement, um, the things that those students have talked about or not yet talked about that could become sticking points and spaces where conflicts could begin. Um, so that's where the first conversation begins. And over the course of the fall semester, there's two more conversations planned that not only uh, check in on how that roommate relationship is gone, but also ask students how they're managing classes and where else they're getting involved and engaging on campus. We've heard about a lot of exciting events, clubs and organizations from Dave and Aaron, and those conversations are designed to make sure students understand those opportunities and don't have any trouble navigating. Um, in addition to those guided connections, we do encourage our RAs and require them when we're not in a pandemic uh, to, to plan some exciting community development events. Uh, the events that our RAs plan are usually smaller in nature, and obviously because of the pandemic, they've been impacted because we don't necessarily have the space for all 111 RAs to have events with food and some of the other things that usually happen. Uh, so some of these events have taken place uh, digitally, whether it's been video games, uh, house party, uh, Zoom, uh, movies online together. Uh, when the weather's been nice, they have done a lot of things outside, and our RAs have gone above and beyond and finding creative ways to engage the residents. Uh, so we've been really excited about that. Um, in addition to those smaller events, uh, we partner with the folks in Campus Life for some larger uh, events uh, as a part of some of those uh, big festivals like Freeze Fest and Spring Fest. And we actually have our annual color run uh, coming up this year as a part of Spring Fest that we're excited we're still able to put on this year. In addition to those events and our guided connections, 
we supervise and advise seven special interest communities. Um, so they are called special interest houses, but they're not standalone houses, they're floors in our residence halls. Um, in total, they comprise about 450 beds. Um, so just a small drop in the bucket compared to the 3000 students who live in the residence halls. But each of those communities also accept all four members. Um, and so there's hundreds of other students who are connected either as all four members or as participants in some of the events and activities that those groups plan. Uh, some of those groups are uh, predisposed to working well in the digital space, Computer Science House being one of them. Uh, they were uh, ready and eager to uh, move most of their functions online right away when we needed to leave campus in the spring. Uh, and they've been joined by the other communities and really embracing navigating the challenges that we've had with in-person experiences to make sure they were still engaging their students, their membership uh, digitally and virtually. Uh, so we've been excited about some of the things they've been able to continue to do. Uh, we encourage you who have students who might have been interested in special interest houses who did not decide to apply this year to always consider joining in the future. Uh, Dave mentioned the Get Involved Fair. Uh, these communities table every year and they do accept students who live in apartments or live off campus and didn't live in their community who would like to be a part of their experiences in the future. Um, and so please check out our special, special interest houses if your students are looking for another way to get involved. Some of them uh, focus on um, academic areas like computer science house, engineering house, the house of general science, and others are affinity based like Unity House that supports, supports our Alana students um, and I House that supports our international students. Uh, and if we could go to the next slide. I mentioned before that uh, one of the other ways we engage students is through policy enforcement, uh, and that is really reactive. Um, there is a proactive way in addition to our guided connections that we reach out to students and that's through outreaches. Uh, whether it's because we've heard from a parent, uh, a friend, a roommate, um, a faculty member, or another staff member that they're concerned about your student, our staff spends a lot of time uh, outreaching to students. Um, and some of those things are for run of the mill things uh, like a sprained ankle um, or when we're not in, in a pandemic, uh, you know, uh, a student who has a cold or has the flu and is struggling to figure out where to get medications on campus. Uh, and sometimes those outreaches are for more significant challenges. And we refer many students to um, our CAPS um, or to other resources on campus. Uh, some of those outreaches um, start and stay in the Center for Residence Life. And some of them are part of a larger network of staff who make sure that students are well connected to resources. Um, and both uh, Sam, who you met, who's helping host behind the scenes, and Aaron, who you're gonna hear from shortly, are a big part of how that network works. Um, and so uh, not only do our, our student staff participate in those outreaches, but so do our professional staff. And one of the, the most important things that we keep in mind is who's the appropriate person to talk to your student about whatever the concern is. Um, and so it's important for you to know that if you call with a sensitive concern and you're looking for help for a residential student, um, we're not necessarily gonna send another student to go talk to them about something um, of significance or something serious. Um, all of our professional staff members who support our residential communities um, have at least a master's degree. Many of them have some experience with counseling or, or a counseling degree or counseling background. Um, and our professional staff would be who would be engaging your students um, for those conversations. Once we do those outreaches, uh, as I mentioned, we do a lot of referral and I'm actually gonna refer you all to Aaron next. Um, so you can hear a little bit more about the services that we have to support our students' mental health. Hi, Erin Parents Castillo again. Um, I'm going to give you a quick rundown um, on you know what we offer, and then you know there's been some questions coming in. I will try my best to answer as we're going along, um, and I understand there'll be more opportunity for that. So uh, we offer. Well, let me start with this. We are on campus. I have clinicians in the office every day. Our door is open. Uh, we encourage students to call, secure a message, walk through our door, whatever it takes um, to get connected. We offer uh, mental health evaluations, short-term therapy, which means we're aiming to work with students within the, the framework of a semester. So we're not gonna be unpacking the life story, but we are gonna be looking at, you know, what's going on for you? How can we best help you get through the semester successfully? And if we're not the folks to do that, how can we get you connected to the people who are? Um, we offer individual therapy, group therapy, uh, single session therapy, which is sometimes called solution focused therapy. And it's really a one-time meeting with a clinician and tell me what's going on, let's come up with a plan, and then off you go to kind of tackle it yourself. And that's great. A lot of our students are well-resourced and love that option. Those are also easier to get into. We offer them Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4.30. Um, 
rather than waiting for an intake, which uh, one of the questions in the chat was, how long does it take to get in? If your student's looking for regular ongoing sessions, an intake can take up to 10 days to get into, um, but we are always under that mark. And in the interim, we offer crisis intervention, which we call urgent care. We offer student consultations, um, which are accessible both for our students who are on campus, as well as through telehealth. Students who are out of state can also offer um, access that. So it's a great way to connect with a counselor, talk about what's going on and receive lots of information about what resources might be available to you and how to get to them. Uh, so we do a lot. Um, we also uh, refer off campus. So if a student presents with a mental health issue that is beyond the scope of practice for us, something that goes beyond our ability to work with within the semester, realistically, long-term care is a better choice, we are gonna work um, with a student to figure out what that best option is, uh, how to get connected and ensure that that connection happens. And we work closely with case management uh, as well to make sure that insurance is accepted um, and finances are access accessible. We don't want anything to get in the way of the care. Um, we have an after hours mental health line that's available 24 seven, uh, if a student goes into mental health crisis and needs to talk to a counselor, there is always gonna be somebody who is available to talk through that. We have a good working relationship with them and we always follow up and extend an invitation to come directly into the center and talk to us about whatever they called for. Uh, drop in and educational outreach. So again, our students who are out of state aren't eligible for mental health one-on-one -on -one services or group therapy, but they are eligible to participate in our consultations and they are eligible to participate in our drop-in sessions. And we have a wide variety of offerings, um, including sleep well workshops, grief workshops, uh, connections for te uh, telecommuting students, what it's like to be an athlete in the time of COVID. Um, we have a wide variety of offerings uh, that are offered every week. All that students have to do is plug into campus groups and they can uh, join bi-weekly if they'd like. So um, there's a lot of questions about how to get in here. As I mentioned, our doors are open, um, but we also, uh, for our students, it's sometimes easier to access us through the wellness portal, which is our secure health portal. Same thing, they would make an appointment for the health center on. They can send us a message, let us know that they're interested. They'll get all of their paperwork through that same portal, complete it and be scheduled. Uh, easy and accessible. We are using Zoom, uh, mostly because it's really uncomfortable to sit for an hour with a mask six feet apart from your therapist when you're talking about something really personal. Um, and we find that most of our students are actually more comfortable on Zoom. If they do not have a private space to meet for um, their session, we have offices available here that are cleaned after every use. The students can request them, they're signed out for the hour. They can just drop in here and have a confidential space for their sessions. So we have done our best to stay up and active. I can tell you, um, our clinicians are busy, um, but we have openings and uh, get calls every day. So I think we're moving on to the Q&A section. I know that more people had um, questions about mental health services. I'm happy to answer more. Yes, feel free to type in your questions. I have a few that I've been pulling that I'm going to go ahead and start with. And Aaron, while you were, or sorry, Aaron PC, we have two Aaron's on here. Um, I'm gonna keep you on the spotlight right now um, because I really like this question. I think you can help. Parents are wondering, you know, how can they recognize signs of a problem from afar? Or how can, you know, parents really differentiate between a bad day that their student is having and a serious issue. Do you have some tips of, or signs for parents to watch out for in terms of their students' mental health? Sure. I mean, I think it's important to realize, which we all know, college is a high stress environment. Um, you know, we're sort of a dead smack in the uh, middle of the semester right now, and I'll tell you, everybody is stressed. Um, but I think the key thing to notice when we're looking for, is this stress or is it something else, is a persistent change in presentation, right? Have they suddenly changed how and when they're communicating with you? Are they avoiding communicating with you? Um, is there a real significant change in 
where their focus is when you're having those communications. Are you seeing a difference in their social media? I think that there's a number of things, but I think what differentiates a bad day and an appropriate stress response is the persistence of um, that change, right? And so that also that accompanying feeling of hopelessness and helplessness. Um, if week after week you're talking to your student, they're like, I just, I don't see a way I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to pull it off. And they're not showing signs of kind of having a bad moment and bouncing back. It's a big red flag. And that's something that's an excellent time to encourage them to try to connect with somebody. Thank you very much. Um, for this next question, I know that any of you can answer it, but Harold, I'm going to ping you here. Can you uh, tell everybody what a student should do if they're concerned about a friend or a roommate? How can they report that concern? Absolutely. So if your student is concerned about another student or roommate, uh, they can report that either to their residence coordinator, uh, who's the professional staff member for their residence hall, to their RA. Um, RAs are uh, explicitly trained on how to report up. Um, they can also report any incident online as well. We actually have a reporting website that has a bunch of different incident reports for all different types of scenarios. Some involve policies and some are just uh, for students who are concerned about somebody else. Um, and they are always welcome to report them independently on their own. If your student wants to report a student, but they're really concerned about being identified as the person who reported, they can always use one of those forms. Public safety is available 24 hours a day for reporting and they can be reached in person. Uh, via telephone at 585-475-3333 um, or via text. And the text number is not that number, but we can uh, share that in the chat for you as well. Um, so there's no wrong way to reach out for help for another student. Um, and I think the biggest thing is to make sure that your student knows if they're worried about someone, they just need to find uh, someone with an RIT name tag and let them know. Thank you, Harold. Um, let's see, what is next? So I just, I just want to clarify this one. I, ha I had a couple questions about this too. So in terms of, of both mental health services and engagement opportunities, can you talk a little bit about what is available for students who are remote versus those who are currently living on campus or in the area? I, That's I can, kind of for all of you. So yeah, whoever I can jump on quick in regards to um, a lot of uh, I mentioned earlier the club fair the, or get involvement fair. Um, we and I think you've also heard campus groups, which is our plat our engagement platform. Um, most of our clubs and organizations are using that, and our a lot of their meetings are in Zoom, uh, which. I, again, I, even echoing what Aaron shared is, is actually pretty impactful and pretty helpful. I mean, many of you are aware that we also have some international campuses. Uh, so we've seen an uptick in some of the, uh, the connection with our international partners uh, uh, overseas. So um, again, specific clubs sometimes can be a little tricky, but, um, but we, do, we, we are hearing uh, and recognize um, that um, using Zoom uh, meetings, uh, and really connecting with our campus group platform. Uh, several of our organizations are utilizing those tools to really keep, keep, to keep connected uh, and, and really start to build uh, the, the, the communities that they're, that they're part of. I think I would add to that, that uh, in terms of some of our other wellness offerings, we're really making it a point to be offering in-person as well as virtual opportunities for all things that we are doing, whether that be our wellness education classes. There are many, many opportunities for students to do those fully virtual as well as opportunities for students to do those in person in a safe setting. Um, there are other opportunities through our health promotion area. When we are offering an in-person opportunity, we will turn right around and also offer, offer another virtual opportunity. Um, and so it is sort of ingrained in us at this point that we have students that are choosing to engage with our services in myriad ways. And we want to make sure that we are meeting them where they're at, where they're comfortable. And we are always open to suggestions or options in terms of, I really want to participate in this, but it's not offered in a format that I can really participate in. And we will pivot and do our best to make sure that students are accommodated in whatever ways they feel comfortable. Thank you all. 
Um, so speaking of all the different ways that students can get involved on campus, do you have any tips for how parents can encourage their students to get involved in many of, any of the many offerings we have? I'll take, the, I'll take a stab at that first one. And again, there's a lot of overlap between um, uh, Aaron Halleck and Avery. Uh, so the wellness stuff uh, and the wellness programs, a lot of really great opportunities. And as you can imagine, there's some, even some overlap in regards to our teams working together. I, I, think, it's, I think it's appropriate to ask um, your, your student, what are they looking for? What, what's, what's gonna excite them outside the classroom, we like to say. What is some, what is some of those engagement, you know, what are some, is it, is, is it a faith-based um, interest? Is it, a, uh, is, it identi is it an identity interest? Is it, a, is it a e is it e sports Is it any type of tech? So there's just so many different things that our students really are involved with, which makes RIT just so incredibly unique. Um, we, we really have something uh, for, for just about every interest. And sometimes, uh, and it goes, sometimes it goes year to year in regards to how much interest there is. Um, but again, we would encourage uh, uh, our students to reach to our team and campus life, our engagement uh, staff, uh, and, and really ask some of those questions. Um, and, and some of that could be part of those those outreaches uh, with, with, with Harold's team and residents' life. It's like uh, so, as you can imagine, uh, with the onboarding uh, of in the start of every year, um, our RAs go through significant training um, and, and just understanding the different resources that you're hearing today and so many other things um, to really help uh, try to find those interest points. Uh, and, and really what we see is when, when there's that interest in there and, and there's that excitement uh, or that passion, if you will, uh, really a lot of things can start to come into place. Uh, and if for whatever reason, we don't have something that your son or daughter, then Come, we have, we have every year, we, we add every year, every semester, four to four to 10 clubs, depending on the year. Um, so uh, we are open. We want to hear from the students uh, and, and we really want to help help them engage and really get, get excited about the great offerings that we have. I think to add to what Dave said too, um, we usually approach this conversation in the wellness area from a well-rounded perspective, right? In order to be a successful student, we want students to be engaged academically and to be participating in those academic reasons why they are at RIT, but that there are so many other reasons why they should and could be involved in extracurricular activities and opportunities. I think your question, Chelsea, is a good one. And for me, it goes back to what we saw in maybe our first, like the third or fourth slide about what is really the underlying reason why they're not feeling comfortable being involved. Um, and so if you're having to have a conversation with your student about encouraging them to be more involved in campus, my first question would be, what's keeping them from wanting to be involved on campus? From there, I would look at what the motivation would be to motivate your student to participate. It could be financially motivated, which I would say, come be a student employee in our Center for Recreational Sports. We um, hire over 80 student employees in any given year. Maybe it's fine, um, physically or uh, fitness oriented, which I would say you've learned about the fitness center. Maybe they want to try something brand new. I would encourage them to take on rock climbing or one of our wellness education classes. Um, but to Dave's point, regardless of what it might be that would push your student to just try something, whether that be a program, a club, a one-time workshop that's being offered, a virtual poppy hour where they can just see cute pets and like dip their toe in the water, that just encouraging them to do just one thing may be the thing that allows them to open up to another well-rounded experience during their, their time here. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna kind of cover the, the next question myself, even though all of you have already shared about this and feel free to jump in with other tips as you think of them. One of the questions that was submitted was, why is there a gap in what I see as a parent and what my student is telling me is on campus? And I just want you as parents to know that that is probably because your student is overwhelmed or stressed or they don't want parents, you know, maybe nagging at them that they should be doing more. Um, or it could be that they don't know, you know, what, what is happening on campus. It's certainly not because they're lying to you by any means. 
students. Um, and I think any kind of gentle nudges that you can give them from the information that you've learned in this can be very helpful. Um, I think especially the idea that there are so many different clubs on campus and there really are things for everyone, that there are ways for them to find, uh, ways to get involved if it's you know academics or um, you know sports or whatever, and maybe help them find something that they would be interested in rather than just pushing them to, to do it on their own if they're feeling very overwhelmed. I think also what's really nice is, you know, as Dave was, I think it was Dave was saying at the beginning is the weather is starting to get nice. And so there's going to be a lot of more opportunities for, for students to be able to gauge, engage in person a lot more easily, like we had in the fall. There was a lot of things going outside in the fall. So encourage your student to pay attention to all of those events calendars and the campus life. You know, if they say there's nothing going on on campus, that's the one I'll tell you that they're not being truthful about. There is so much going on on campus every week and just maybe help direct them in, as to where to find that information. Um, I don't know if anyone has anything to add. Like I say, a lot of this print presentation is really about why students might be telling you something different than what you're seeing from us. Aaron speaking, um, I'll, I'll piggyback off of that. And I talk, I, I'm very frequently the urgent care provider on staff. Um, I also frequently answer phone calls from parents who have heard from their students that there are no appointments available. There's no way they're getting into therapy. Um, I really wanna emphasize the fact that again, our door is always open. I have two staff on urgent care, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. We will absolutely take somebody who is having a crisis, a bad day, needs to talk to somebody and make sure that they're connected to an appropriate appointment. Um, so urgent cares can be accessed same days. Single sessions can be scheduled same day or a preferred day and time that very same week. Um, and that delay that students might hear about is just scheduling an intake. And there's lots of services available between here and there. So if your student is sharing those concerns with you, uh, please feel free to send them our way. Thank you, Erin. So another question, do you have any advice for a parent or for their student who says that they don't have time for any fun because all they have going on is classes, no, no time for fun in their day? I can take a stab at that. Um, I, I, I do agree. I think we heard earlier uh, um, the stress is real. I think um, we, we, we're in that uh, the heart of the semester, as I, I like to use that term. Uh, and um, I, the students are um, you know, working through midterms, projects. Um, but I, I, again, I, I um, the, the in the student government perspective, I, I do listen and I hear a lot. Uh, I'm on their weekly meetings and I, we spend a lot of time with their advocacy and, and really, and they sit on faculty senate and, and they share these concerns and, and they share some of the, so uh, again, we don't get involved, if you will, with, with our partners um, uh, per se in, in academic affairs, but they're keenly aware. Um, they were part of the these recharge days that uh, for tomorrow, um, student government was at the table last fall when, 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 they were, when, when the university was building uh, the academic calendar for this semester and they heard loud and clear, students need a break. Uh, students are, are working hard. Um, they're obviously so motivated and, and so talented uh, in, in their majors uh, and, and they're so driven, but it, again, finding that balance uh, really. And, and so uh, again, not necessarily a tip, but just recognizing that there's folks not only on this call, but throughout campus, including student leaders, that are also advocating for that. And again, using a day like tomorrow, I can't keep emphasizing when, when, when we scheduled this a few weeks ago, it's like, let's let's use this Tuesday night so we can help promote what tomorrow is. The list is absolutely incredible. And it's getting, and, and so get the students out of the room tomorrow and, and take a trip uh, to, to Menden Ponds or the weather's gonna be nice and just get outside. There's there's a there's a lot to do there. Um, but that, that really to, to, to get that fresh mind, uh, get that fresh air, if you will, uh, catch your breath uh, and, and recharge, literally recharge to be stronger for the, for, for, you know, for the last few weeks. So. We also add to, uh, to Dave's comments that if your student is very academically inclined and you're not necessarily certain that their um, lack of engagement outside of their coursework is because of the amount of work and maybe just their work style um, and their attention to detail, it might not be a bad idea to ask them if they thought about working as a tutor. Um, those students might be really well inclined to work with our Academic Success Center um, as a part of the team of peer educators there. Um, uh, we do have a math and science study center that 
is staffed by folks in our division. Um, and they are always looking for talented students in math and science to help staff those spaces. Um, I know they are doing some things in person this semester as well. Um, and there's some other programs similar to that that might be um, a great way for them to continue to feel engaged their academic coursework, but also feel like they're connecting with folks in a, in a different setting. Thank you, Harold. Um, this next question I think is really important. It's can a parent call on behalf of a student? You know, if the student is is afraid to call or maybe has a hard time, you know, reaching out for help, um, can a student or I'm sorry, can a parent call on behalf or maybe uh, we want to reframe that as call with their student? Um, Aaron, PC, would you like to cover that one? Um, I was in the middle of typing a response, so I'm really glad it came up because I'd much rather answer it. Uh, I frequently have these conversations. It's not unusual for students to feel just completely at a loss when it comes to what am I even going to say when I make that first phone call? I don't know where I'm going to put the appointment in my schedule. I don't know what to ask for. Um, and, and they can really shut down um, that process before it even gets started. So um, we do frequently have parents who call and would like to schedule for their students. We would love it um, to partner uh, with the parent and the student. So three-way call is a great option. Um, a Zoom meeting with myself, the parent, and, and, and the student also works great um, if we can kind of do that. But we, of course, always want therapy, mental health services to be a choice that the students make. And once they get through the door, we tend to find that they're comfortable and we're able to engage with them and get them going in the process. So we want to support that first step. If you've got questions about how to go about doing that or initiating that conversation, you are welcome to call our office. Um, we will certainly walk through the particulars with you. But yeah, so we cannot schedule uh, just on a parent's request, but we can always figure out a way to make a good attempt at getting the student to partner in that process. So this isn't completely related to that topic, but I just wanna make sure we cover it since there's only four minutes left. Um, Aaron did talk about emergency after hour services, but I just wanted to make sure it's noted that if you're ever really concerned about the well-being of your student and it's an emergency, the first person you, people you should call is public safety. Um, they are the ones who will be able to do wellness checks on your student. So if it's ever an emergency, that should absolutely be a parent's first call to campus if they're concerned about their student and public safety will go check on, on them. Aaron, um, can I just add really quickly, we've got a really wonderful relationship with public safety. Um, they are great at responding to these kind of cases where there's just a student who's really struggling or, or maybe just can't make those first outreach. And they will also reiterate, here's what supports are valuable. They will give them that after hour mental health line. But yeah, if there's an immediate concern, they are the go-to and they do a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. So I wanted, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember if you all covered this during your presentation part. I think I was busy reading all the questions, but I wanna make sure we also cover if there are any costs to any of the services we've mentioned, whether that be um, the engagement opportunities or, or the mental health services. I'll jump first uh, when it comes to clubs and organization, uh, the student activity fee covers all those. Uh, they help uh, uh, fund uh, the teams uh, and, and uh, most of the programs, uh, occasionally when we have a major, major uh, event, uh, there might be a small fee, but um, in our case, uh, student activity fee covers all of those, those engagement opportunities. In terms of wellness engagement, um, similar to what Dave said, a majority of our programs and services are covered. There's some extras. So uh, for instance, if you wanted to get a locker rental in a fitness facility, that would cost extra um, and I can think of things like in our wellness ed classes, a majority of classes, up to two classes are covered by the institution, um, which I think is a really wonderful part of being a part of RIT, that your first two wellness classes are required prior to graduation and the cost of those classes up to $105 are going to be covered by the institution. Uh, any additional classes that the student chooses to take will be included in tuition. And some of our classes are over that $105 fee. For instance, some of our outdoor education classes that are weekend trips or um, trips that might be more uh, intensive, those would potentially cost more. But our health promotion programming, um, 
Red Bard Climbing does have an additional fee. It's very nominal uh, for a climbing membership or you can get individual day passes. So I would say a majority of our services are covered or have a very nominal fee to them. Um, Thank you, Dave and Aaron. Um, Aaron, other Aaron, did you want to talk about the mental health services and and fees and costs? Yeah, so I'll echo um, the the student health fee uh, is uh, what covers our services. It is built into most students' tuitions. Um, students who uh, need help working out if if they have not paid that fee yet um, and need assistance, we have resources here to do that and walk through the process. But um, a one-time fee covers their access to mental health services as well as the health center. Um, and uh, I think that, that pretty much so our group such everything is covered. So there's no additional fees once that, that one-time fee is paid. And again, for most students, it's already been taken care of in their tuition. I'm having problems unmuting. Every time I click it, I have to click it twice and then I mute myself again. Um, so with that, I know that um, a few uh, questions are being answered in the chat, but it looks like we've covered most things and we are at time. Uh, I just want everybody to know that we are recording this session, so we will be sharing it in the next parent newsletter if you want to review and, and remember some of the tips that we were what we had shared. I also encourage you to go back to the newsletter we sent at the beginning of the month, the, the special edition one, which actually did include a lot of this information, including phone numbers and links and, and a lot of this. And so that went out at the very beginning of the month and you can find it on the parent website if you don't have it in your email anymore in our archives. Uh, and also, you know, if you have another question that wasn't answered today or you didn't really want to ask it, you can always reach out to my office, the parent office at parents at rit.edu. I, if I can't answer your question, I often reach out to my colleagues, including the ones you see on the screen now, um, to help make sure that you're getting connected to the right people. Uh, with that, thank you all for joining and, you know, encourage your student to have fun tomorrow and to get outside, enjoy the sunshine and, and to take a break away. Um, thanks to my panelists and thanks to all the participants today.